Hello everybody, this is Chris, and this is part two of the Pi Storm build. In the previous episode, you saw how I got a base Pi Storm uh, put in the Amiga 500 here, and how we uh, flashed the CPLD, booted off of some floppies to get some baseline numbers. I used my external GoTech to just put some base programs, like a sysinfo, uh, workbench, just to show you that it worked, it loaded, it, it booted a, a game. Yes, I know the music was a little fast. She was still an NTSC Amiga, so PAL games on NTSC make the music go just a little bit faster. So today, I want to go over two things. Uh, number one, hard drive image files. How do we set those up? How do you get them? How do you make them? Etc. Also, how do you do the RTG or retargetable graphics to really make this sucker just pop? Also, I'm going to show you how to put the Kickstart ROM for mapping so you don't have to rely off of the ROM that is in the board. You can leave it in there, but she'll just re-kick or pull the ROM off of the actual Pi Storm itself. So you'll have the ability to run a ROM from Workbench 1.3 through 3.1.4, which I have tested and works perfectly. Uh, all the fast RAM will be available to you on any of the ROMs. Now, 1.3 is going to be your minimum so you can have hard drive images. If you wanted to roll back to 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, you can, but you're going to be old school floptical, floptical? floppy boot only. Originally, I did an install through actual floppy disk media into the floppy drive or off of my GoTech and back and forth to get something base level. You can create items and use those and I'll go over that also but I just want to give you a lowdown on what we're going to do so let's get started so this is my Ubuntu machine and I have the program called wine not the wine you drink but it's the Windows emulation environment and you can run either Amiga Forever or WinUAE for simplicity I'm going to run WinUAE and I think you can use Amiga Forever too but this way is the more simple way what I like to do is on your main screen, you have all your configurations. You don't really need to even load anything. Go ahead and click over here on CD and hard drives. And you're going to say, add a hard file. Now, don't worry about anything at the top or these two buttons for sparse or dynamic. Because we're making this on a real Amiga. So right here, you're just going to give it a megabyte size. Now, I would recommend starting off with like a 2 gig partition for your workbench. Right? Or system where you're going to load workbench from. If you're going to do it this route, this is for creating your own. Now you can use an Amiga Forever hard drive image, and we'll go over that in a bit. So I'm going to create a 2 gigabyte partition. Your options are RDB OFS FFS, that is Rigid Disk Block, Original File System, Fast File System. If you click the drop down, let me move this up just a hair, you will see that you also have PFS3, PDS3, SFS, or Custom. We can do PFS3. I like that file system. I like to keep it under 4 gigs, just so the hard drives will load an HD toolbox. If you make a 4 gigabyte partition, sometimes it's going to wrap around. You might get an error loading it in HD toolbox. This does not apply to 3.1.4 ROMs or better, because it will detect large hard drive support. However, for Workbench, the install of Workbench on system, just make it under, like like 3 gigs or under. or Make it like 3800 or something like that. But we're going to do 2000, and then we're going to click Create. So you get a window. I just typed 2 gig underscore PFS3.hdf, and I click Save. And that's it. It made a file. Now what? Close your WinUAE. Now, since the file system on the Pi Storm is Linux, well, I'm already running Linux. So I can just insert my SD card and mount it natively. If you're a Windows user, you can use Disk Ternals Linux Partition Explorer. It's free for 30 days, and you can do the same thing I'm doing on Windows. Now I'm going to browse to the directory. And remember, Linux is a little different. So here we go. Here's my list of stuff that I've been working on. So here's our 2 gig PFS3 HDF. 
Now in my case, it's 2.1 gigs. Remember, the modern operating systems like to calculate a gigabyte not on the normal 1024 bits per byte. They're using 1000. So your 4000, like I was saying earlier about the rollover on Amiga limitations, it would actually be larger than 4 gigs. So 2 gigs or 2,000 is actually 2.1 gigs in normal computer math, not using that other stuff. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to compress this. Now in my case I'm going to use 7-zip and click create. It turns that 2.1 gigabytes into about three or four hundred kilobytes because I can then share that link with you over the internet on my Google Drive and you can download a blank empty partition and do your own stuff to it. There's no ROMs, there's no nothing involved which would violate any copyrights. It's just the hard drive image file or HDF which is what we're going to use on the Pi Storm. So that 4 or 2.1 gigs turned into 291.6 kilobytes. Isn't that great? So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to go to the Linux card for the Pi Storm and we're going to go into Home, Pi. I made a directory in home pie called Amiga Files, right? See that one right there? Now, I'm going to try and keep my camera closely zoomed, but my piece of crap camera freaks out. I'll get one one day. I'm just poor. I keep spending money on Amiga stuff. So here we go. I'm going to go into my folder, and where did I put it? Uh, Amiga Files, Share, HDF. So I'm going to take this 2.1 gig PFS3 HDF and I'm going to drag it over to my home Pi Amiga files. And that's your hard drive file. While you're in your Amiga files directory, you're going to see I copied two kickstart files. I copied these from my Pi Amiga install. These are uh, Amiga 1200 ROMs. Both I legally own. Uh, 3.1 A1200.ROM for testing, and then I did a 314 A1200ROM from my 1200 purchase where I got these install disks from. So I copied those over and I copied my hard drive files over. Great! Now what? We're going to go into this uh, home Pi, we're going to go into Pi Storm, and we're going to open default config. Make a copy of your default config so you, in case you screw it up, you have something to go back to. You can always customize your config names and call them yourself when you load the emulator. But for simplicity, we're using default config and we're just making a copy of default config in case we ever blow something up, we can get back to where we were. Now, there's a lot of words in here. At the very, very top, you're going to see the map ROM. Um, we're mapping 512 kickstart ROM to default offset. It's got a lot of math and hex addresses in here, but Look how I did my file. I went file equals dot dot slash Amiga dash files. That takes you up a directory from Pi Storm into slash home slash Pi and my directory of Amiga files. And I just call my kick 314 a1200.rom and this OVL equals zero. That's it. Make sure your hashtag is out so line four would have an open line. That does the ROM. The uh, set var RTG, we're going to go ahead and uncomment. We're going to leave CDTV alone. Line 38, ouch, God, funny bone. Line 38, set var pi scuzzy. Now, these allow you to map seven mapped drives to the interface. Pi scuzzy 0 through pi scuzzy 6. I'm only using two. You'll see right here, line 40 for me, set var pi scuzzy 0. I did the same thing, dot dot slash amiga dash files and I called it system.hdf. That is literally this file, system.hdf. Can you see that clearly? System.hdf, the second one's dh2. We have the new one we just made. We'll get to that in a second. But I'll cover dh2 in the, in the video. So now, same thing, set var, pi scuzzy one, dot, dot, slash, amiga dash files, slash dh2.hdf. That gives you two hard drives, in the machine. That is it. Save your config and quit. Eject the card from your Linux or Windows machine and reinsert it into the Pi Storm. Boop. Now, 
Now, I apologize in advance for the camera angle because I got it sitting on the shelf behind me and uh, my filming skills are just ace. Alright, we're just going to boot off a DF1, not worrying about the ROM screen because you can tell here it is uh, already set up. We're going to press a key to just toggle between NTSC and PAL. Here's PAL. Here's NTSC, as you can see by my Chinese adapter freaking out. So I'm going to go ahead and boot uh, DF1 here, which is the external the external GoTech right here, and uh, it has uh, the install 3.1 on, on it. Now, here is how we're going to do this. We're going to load OS 3.1 for now. I'll do 3.1.4 or something later on. For now, I just want to do a blank 3.1 install. You're going to need to go into the hard drive toolbox in HD Tools. Now yours may have languages. I delete all the ones I don't use. Where here, where you see where mine says GVP SCSI device, you can tell I used it on GVP. I need to change this to whoops, pi SCSI dot device and say save. You don't need to have a devs DOS driver or anything. It's loaded in the PyStorm ROM file. So now we're going to go ahead and load this, and you're going to see my super big 4 gigabyte partition. So once you load here, you're going to see the drive is named Vampire. I had one of the Vampire team make it for me, but we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to say partition drive. We're going to drag this DH0 down a tick. Click on the second partition. We're going to get DH1. It is not bootable. OK. And save changes to drive. Now when I check it, I have DH0 and DH1. Say OK and exit. It'll ask you to reboot. Double mouse button. Boot off of my floppy. You can see I have DHO and DH1 are there. That was like fast as heck. Still rocking off uh, physical media for now. We're going to do the standard Amiga format. System. No trash can. Quick format. OK. It's PFS3. There you go. DH1. Now why did I do PFS3? Well, that's what Simo made for me. Work. And um, and that's what it was. So now we have system and we have work. So now we can actually go through the install of Workbench 3.1 on this machine. So I want to time lapse this. This is a standard Amiga install, just like you're sitting in a real Amiga. Because I'm sitting in a real Amiga, Okay, so as you can see, one half brow later, we have we have uh, 3.1 installed. So it says reboot, remove the disk. So I'm going to remove the disk and proceed. It's going to reboot. GoTech is out, and it booted that quick. All right, now I can't. I have to adjust the overscan. So I'm going to drag these. Come here, please. I can't see you. So system. Good God, overscan, edit graphic size. Yeah, we're just a little off. Okay, that's cool. Okay, save. All right. So now we're on PyStorm on a hard drive image. Workbench 3.1. Now, I do like the icons, so I'm going to do this. Copy. Uh, DH0. Disk.info to DH1. Now I'm going to reboot. Watch how fast this boots. So I'm going to control, left amiga, right amiga. And it's up. <laughs> that is so freaking fast. That makes the vampire look like an Atari 2600. I know it doesn't have the same horsepower. I'm on a Pi 3A. But good God, look at that. Alright, so now I'm on sneaker net. And you'll see with the reboot, it did copy the other thing. All right, Utilities 1, this should have directory works on it. Good. Gugga mugga. I got my Amiga Kit sensors in there. So, now I can move stuff quickly. I'm going to run sysinfo and get the benchmarks. So, I apologize in advance for the boringness of building a, a base OS. It is not the nicest thing to watch somebody do. 
finally I'm at to a point where I got SysInfo on. So, SysInfo running off the drive. 6830, 6881, blah, 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 blah. Memory, 128 megs, same as before, one mega chip. Drives, DH0 speed. 26, 26, 214, 400. 26 megs per second. What? Oh, almost 786 meg per second. It's only got 80 buffers. Holy bar mitzvah. All right, DH1 is a second partition. It's 786, 432. Yep, answers normal SCSI command. Fake SCSI disk, Pi SCSI, four gigs. Awesome sauce, all that for that. Speed, we can increase any speed maybe? I don't know, 725 megahertz. It's not, maybe 72, I don't know. All right, so let's do which Amiga. Yeah, 2.5 megahertz CPU and 12.7 megahertz FPU. No MMU, OCS, Fat Agnes, Batman found 3.1, 3.1, it's a 500. Yep, that's fine. I don't think that's that's it. I uh, haven't did anything else yet. Let me continue. Hey, on. It's been a bit. We're going to go to work. We're going to run sys speed here. I want to see what we're getting on the old uh, sys need MUI. The old actual horsepower. This gives me better results. I'll tell you what, I'm running off floppy disks. <laughs> And ADFs, and it's a pain in the freaking hiney hole to find all of your software on physical media. So I had to resort to the old way. I am doing Amiga Explorer for my Amiga Forever 2.0 CD, connected to my computer over here because that's always fun. It is a whopping one megabyte, but transferring in 512k packets. This software is flaky at best. It's USB here, it's serial right here into the back of the 500. The goal of this turd endeavor is to get a working hard drive file that I can use to dick around with. I mean, it's whatever. I'm not going to be WHD loading. I can still, I can, it'll be to get extremely fast. My goal is to get sys speed on here. And this is going to take four minutes to copy one megabytes. So I'm going to drink a beer and I'll be back. Son of a biscuit fart. I had a minute left on that copy. The Magic Workbench at a pace that is faster than anything I have ever seen before. I literally just clicked start and it went Plip. Finally got MUI to copy after many tries so we're going to go into uh what am i going into uh system info we're going to check the processor here so contrary to popular belief on the uh sys info megahertz stuff you'll get you'll see that this is now an 030 at 57 megahertz with an 881 at 147 so sometimes you can hit this a couple times and it'll change a little bit. But for the most part, you're running at 60 megahertz, which is still 10 times faster than a 7.16 megahertz MTSC Amiga. So I'm gonna go into CPU and I'm gonna hit the uh, MIPS and Megaflops. So we're getting 13.92 MIPS and 5.01 Megaflops. So I mean, is it good? Hell yeah, it's good. The hard drive access is super daggone fast. Processing power is a little light, so it's not going to run Pymega at all. So I'm not even going to try an HDF file. Um, it would just be too slow. When I need reboots fast, watch this. One, two, well, three seconds. So now I'll run sys speed again. It should just pop up with the... There we go, 57,141. So that's a more accurate megahertz number because if you run sysinfo, again, it's gonna say 700 and something megahertz over here. And that's just some weird calculation that it's using, which is still cool to see. 725 megahertz, there is no way. 
even if you did 26 times a 68,000, what the hell is that? That's 186 megahertz in math if you're just doing 7.16. So even that calculation doesn't work. But we all know that SysInfo doesn't necessarily uh, turn D-burst on. Calculate correctly with JIT or Virtual Amigas. It does okay on real Motorola's up to a certain point. So this has it at 14.47 and 6.68. Not bad, still good. The disk access, beyond that, disk access is incredible. So let's do sys speed here. And we're gonna trade, uh, trade. We're gonna check that disk access here. So we're gonna go drive. Yeah, this thing is just ripping. It's already done. I didn't even get a chance to look at it. So these are in megabyte per second. I'm getting 374 on read, 294 megabyte per second. Not megabit, megabyte. That is freaking crazy. I don't have any test comparisons to do, but isn't that crazy? It's pretty much stable. 368 megabyte per second and 288 megabyte per second write. So that's where it makes up for in the horsepower department. Now, this is a Pi 3A. I'm going to throw a Pi 3B plus on there for comparison. I'll do that in a little bit. But I finally got sys speed on here. And this is a basic Magic Workbench 3.1 uh, using an A1200 ROM on an Amiga 500 in with a Raspberry Pi and you know, my little bag here to keep it from touching. And it doesn't touch anyway, so I can, I'm okay. I just put this here for my own safety, just in case. And yes, it still fits. I can put the case back on and everything's cool. But watch, we're gonna do a live Turn on and just see how long it takes to get to the Amiga desktop, booting the Pi, and starting the computer. From raw cold. I'm gonna put the power supply down because I don't need to hold it. It's usually about 20 seconds. Because basically you're crashing the Linux kernel every single time you turn it on or turn it off cold. Here it comes. So there you go. Probably still within range of a normal Amiga startup. <coughs> now, instant reboots on the Amiga side once the Pi is already booted. The disk access is just so fast. That's all I gotta say about that. I had a typo, so I rebooted and I SSH'd and I forgot the daggone slash. And I call this a dot. Apologies on that. So now that they match DH2 to HDF, we're going to go Control X, save the buffer. Yes, I'm just going to say reboot. Oh man, sudo reboot. Okay, so this is rebooting. We're going to then switch to the Amiga. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into System, Tools, HD Toolbox. I got to break this less than four gigs even though it's not four gigs it's doing something funny i don't know let's cut it down a little bit two gigs right thank you virus -E. and in a second i should get my dh2 uninitialized which i can then should be able to now format dang it format quick format go let's see if it works okay Yep, had to be less than 4 gigs. So now I can go uh, rename, control X, DH2. And then I can go back in, system, and tools, HD toolbox. And then I can add up to 7 of these. But I don't like how it's... Uh, I did choose an empty area of the disk, you butt. New partition, click, there we go. All right. Wrong keyboard. DH3, I don't know, I'm just... Let's do one that is a... Uh... That one. 
and I'm going to change International Fast File System, right? International Fast File System DH3 1.8 gig. Save, quit. After the next reboot, I should get another one. Let's see. In a second. Fire C, I took you out of there. Why are you still running? My desktop I already have a dupe of you. Okay, so here is DH3. Oh my god, magic menu on here. Control X, DH3, and whatever. Quick format. Go ahead. Yep, that's fast file system uh, 4620 for um, uh, 314. So now I go copy DH0. Disk.info to dh2. And then I'll write the E. I'm going to change this to dh3. And I'm going to reboot so I have all the hard drive icons the same and I'll just re snapshot them. Now I got four hard drives on this Pi SCSI device. Look at that. dh3, dh2, working system. Wow. And get one more. It can look just like Pi Mega. Incredible. So two, four, six, eight gigs like nothing. I don't know why this ROM is uh, using not supporting large hard drive. It is the 314 ROM. So I'm testing that one out. But now let's get back to the monkey in the room. The instructions in the driver. I got the driver from the archive I downloaded from GitHub. So number one, I spent $18 on iComp.de and I got the latest um, Picasso 96, or they're calling it P96. In the PyStorm archive here, inside of PyStorm main in the zip, you just saw we did platforms Amiga. Here's the RTG driver right here, RTG driver Amiga. I just literally copy this over. There is a readme in here. You should read. It tells you exactly how to install it. It says it is not straightforward at all. You gotta transfer some files to the Amiga side, install Picasso 96, requires at least Kickstart 2.0, and Picasso 96 version 2.4 or greater, uh, requires at least 3.1 and 020. Select any graphics driver you want, but you have to edit it and tell it to load Pi Graphics or Pi GFX 020 from the RTG driver Amiga directory and copy it into libs, Picasso 96. Yep, I'm gonna leave this up because I'm gonna screw it up. So I'm going to use the old PC here and uh, use Amiga Explorer. This is the newest one with Amiga Forever 9. And I don't, it has some offline modes or something like that. I don't really know. And we're going to browse the RAM disk. And I'm going to copy over this Picasso 96 LHA. Right, I realized that being in darkness was a little bit too dark. So someone for commented on one of the other video that this RTG is going to be a two beer uh, endeavor so beer number one cheers what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up Amiga Explorer again because I really don't have any way to copy files to it I've popped the directions up over here for the RTG I'm going to I got the RTG driver I just called it RTG Driver Amiga. I'm going to use Amiga Explorer and drag this sucker into RAM. I did try dragging stuff to hard drives, but this has so much RAM it actually works better. When I drag it into the hard drives, some it doesn't have the right vitamins or something and it gives me errors or craps out. So I have better luck just dragging this into RAM. Alright, so that's done. Turn off Amiga Explorer. Run directory opus and go to RAM on the left. RTG driver Amiga. So let me move this real quick. I'm just going to move this to DH1, right? I'll move it to DH1 installs. DH1 is work. We'll go to nope. Is that it? Installs. There, RTG driver. So we're going to do this Picasso 96 install. This is the one I just bought. 
I'm following the instructions to install Picasso 96. It's now called P96 as your graphics system. My desk is just freaking trashed. Apologies. And we're going to do a first install. Proceed. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm going to choose Picasso 4 because I saw that somewhere. Proceed. Just libs, monitors, prefs. Fine. Sure. Yep. Nope. Yep. Okay. Uh, please install the application drivers. Whatever. Thanks. Alright, so that's Picasso 96. So let's get into... I'm using Directory Works because Opus gets on my nerves and this is nice and clear for me. Okay, so we installed Picasso 96. We will need to edit the tool type for the monitor it installs to load the Pi Graphics driver instead of something like the Picasso 4. So, we're going to DH1 installs Pi Storm RTG driver. Take these two files and stick them in where? Libs Picasso 96. We'll copy these over. Copy, copy. I'm just copying them both. I don't know. Don't worry about the C and the build, and that's the compile files. Just this. So, pygraphics.info is the monitor, which will go in devs, monitors. Here's our Picasso. So, we're going to take this one and we're going to rename this one Pi GFX. Cool, I'm going to leave this Picasso for. Yeah. Devs. Monitors. Pi graphics. Right Amiga I. Now, Sys Devs Picasso 96 settings. Okay. Board type. Pi G... Oh, it's already set up. Pi GFX 020. You can also move the monitor file and double click on it to load if you want. Once you've rebooted and loaded, launch Picasso 96 and make your own Pi Storm RTG board. Okay, save, reboot. We'll see. I took Virus Z out because it was getting on my daggone nerves. So, now we're going to go to System, Prefs, Picasso 96, which should be right here. Can't find any modes. That's fine. We have a board. Okay, so we're going to go. See this little package thing right here? Everything's a drag and drop with Picasso. So let me do it. This is your five second tutorial on Picasso 96. All right, so we're going to grab this. This is new items. You drag it into here. And we're going to attach this to a board. Attach to this board. So Polystorm has a graphic. Now we need to make a resolution. So grab new and drag it here. And we're going to drag this one. And drag this one. And drag this one. I'm dragging the four, the same thing. So 640 by 480. What's next? Uh, 800 by 600. Whoops. Right? And then I have to do new over here too for a mode. See, that's 256. And then you got to choose drag again and change this one to high and drag again. High. We can test it. But I don't have a cable hooked up. That's great. So I have to get another HDMI cord that I do not have because it's in here into the Pi. Like my dilemma. So the HDMI from here has to go in here. And then I have to switch while well, I'm already on HDMI. So I guess I could just take this. Let's just let's just test 800 by 600 I saved my modes. Reboot now. Alright, so I have a Picasso 96 modes. We're gonna go sys prefs uh, screen mode. Take a sip of beer. Now I see my pie storms. Before I go pulling the trigger here, I have an idea. So on the Amiga 4000, because it only had an RGB port, but yet a 31 kilohertz capable signal, you got this little dude. DV23 to VGA. Well, I just happened to have... I had the VGA signal right here. This monitor displays everything, so I'm just going to do this. Just for S and G's, this monitor will display 15 kilohertz. I'm going to unplug this HDMI box. And because you're not supposed to do this, and I don't care, I'm just going to root around here until this thing fires in there. I'm going to go to uh, input, 
VGA. Just see if it works. Okay, it looks kind of eh, but it's functional. Okay, great. That way I can take this HDMI, which is just plugged into the monitor, and I'm gonna plug this one into the Pi. And plug it in right here, right on top of the ROM, and it's gonna rest on the Agnes, so I don't have to worry about it falling down, even though it's supposed to sit like that. Put this back in, and actually I still got plenty of room. Turn this on. VGA first, okay? So we're in VGA. Back this out just a tick so you can see the whole enchilada. Okay, so it's booting. It's in crappy mode. It's off the, the inner, you know, whatever. It's just so I can show HDMI. So we're going to go system, prefs, uh, screen mode. We're going to choose 1024 by 760 at 80 hertz. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to say test, and I'm going to try and get to HDMI real quick. For the 10 second timer times out. Yes, it works. See that? 1024 by 768, 8 bit. Click the button. Now I gotta go back to VGA, which is my 15, because this is a Dell U2410F. Works great. Uh, I didn't make anything higher. So we're gonna do 800 by 632 bit color. Look at this 1.67 million colors. I'm just going to hit use, right? It's going to shove it over there. That way I can take my time. And this is 800 by 600, maybe. 16.7 million color. Oh, look at that. I got the AGA backdrop. That's kind of eh. Cool. So that's RTG. Now the only downfall is 15 kilohertz programs. I love directory works. If I run directory works, just like Pymega, just like everything else, a Mithlon, whatever, it needs a source, or a vampire even, it needs a source for 15 kilohertz. There's my 15 kilohertz. If I quit it, this goes black, or gray in this case, and I have to switch back to HDMI, Bob's your uncle. There is a fix for that. You can run Mode Pro. I'm not going to get into Mode Pro. I did a whole video on Mode Pro. Go back a month or something, I don't know what, a month from this video, maybe two or three. It's just called Mode Pro 31 kilohertz VGA or something, something like that. Check that one out. Something real purdy there, Clark. You need the new Picasso 96. I tried it with the one on Aminet. Doesn't work. At all. Don't know why. So I'm going to grab Mode Pro here. So here is a 24-bit backdrop of the lake that I have on my Amiga 4000 on uh, 962k of chip RAM 125 mega fast RAM which is what this Amiga is and we're in RTG mode. That's how you're going to be on a single monitor solution. You're going to have to mode pro stuff. Pros and cons of that just like in my mode pro video. You are not going to be able to boot games. You're not going to be able... This is RTG Amiga. This is what it was. It was a dual monitor solution unless you had a pass-through cable or a NEC multi-sync big hunkin monitor that was about this deep and had a screen that big and that was how it was multiple inputs and you still had to flip the input on the monitor like I'm doing here so this is a Dell U2410F it works fine it has every input under the sun from display port to HDMI to composite component VGA doesn't have RGB doesn't have SCART because this is a United States monitor um, so that's just some of the things but PyStorm RTG works it's uh, doing quite well uh, I've had no problems with it. I've broke it more than anything. So it's just cool. Let's see. Sysinfo is going to be a 15 kilohertz program. I'm going to say screen mode. And I'm going to say, I'm going to promote it to screen mode. Let's do PyStorm 640 by 480. Use, save. Okay. So that one would work with Force Planner. So we'll say Force Planner on that one. Save. Now we run it. Now it looks a little better. It's still weird, but looks a little better. Come on, sucker. You can do it. PyStorm RTG mode, 640 by 480 at 27 kilohertz. Now we're at 7.16 megahertz. Phone me now. 
Why would I phone you now on a stock megahertz report? 2.7 times faster than an Amiga 4000. What? Why is it faster now? Or was it always faster? I forget. Now, I could do something cool, and what I'm going to do real quick before the day ends here, and I'll blip back in just a second because it's getting kind of late for my old bones. I'm going to do away with this hard drive thing, these that two lines I have in the config. Now, so I don't have to change everything under the sun, how about you just get up here? Mega 500 Linux. All right. So we're going to go into files, we're going to go into rootfs, we're going to go into home, pi, amiga files. I'm going to make another folder and dh2, move them in there. Let's grab a workbench 3.1 hdf while we're at it. And whatever, here's workbench 1.3. I'm just taking these from amiga forever. We're going to eject this disk, but it can be a pain in the butt. Linux is booting. And it doesn't like the hard drive file. But, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Let's see what I screwed up on, because you know me. Oh my god. Remember I was telling you about case sensitive? And I didn't. So this will be Workbench 1.3, if it works. Pi is booting in one second. It's starting to boot, I think. Booting. Alright. Now I have a 3.14 ROM, so it's going to complain. I'm going to put install 3.14 in the disk drive. Just so it has it. It's loading the icon library. Big pet peeve. There we go. Workbench 1.3. Woohoo. Wrong keyboard. This side. Workbench 1.3 with a 2018 Hyperion ROM. 1 mega chip, 135 mega fast. Let's do something without rebooting it. We're going to go to the Ubuntu side. SSH into that sucker. And then we're going to go nano uh, default the config. I'm going to change this to WB31. Oh, HDMI. It was booting off the install disk. <laughs> so this is Workbench 3.1, 6 megabytes. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, 4.3 meg, 1.6 meg free. This was a 6 meg solid hard drive file. And it was... Libtard, library to, oops. All right, so now we're gonna remove the disk and we should be able to boot instantly. Bingo, so there is my big pet peeve, backdrop, snapshot all, cool. But I'm just showing you hard drive options. I'm showing you how it works, how it's done, and what you can do to get yours running. So I want to do some renaming in the old file system because I don't feel like typing it. I'm going to go back to the graphical and I started this hard drive image build not on Amiga Forever which I should have because it would have been so much easier. I did it by floppy disks and manually doing this again which was a royal pain in the butt and you really appreciate modern technology and freaking networking. Holy crap, I appreciate networking. So, yep, delete, delete, I'm getting rid of Megasys, taking mine, control A, X, here, paste, P I O zero. I'm going to call this sys, i got to rename this sucker, uh, L2, system, and DH2, how's that, that's fine, get rid of stuff, yep. Empty the trash because I don't feel like hearing it. And then I gotta go PyStorm default config, scroll down, system. Oops. And then uncomment this line. Whoops. Hit save. And I'm back in business where I was. I gotta get rid of some of these services. There's RTG. So there we go. We're booted back up to where I left off a minute ago. Two blank hard drives. My work partition and system. And in a second, my picture will show up. And if I run Amadoc, it's going to look just like my 4000. 
so that is how you RTG the Pi Storm. It's not too hard, it's just a little bit of back and forth. I prefer an Ubuntu machine. A lot of you guys are Windows or Macintosh or Hackintosh or whatever you got. Uh, it'll work on anything as long as you have access to an editor. I like getting back and forth with Linux because I can access the partitions as you saw I was copying. Uh, if you are on a Windows machine you can run Disk Ternals um, Linux Reader. It's disk uh, diskinternals.com I believe. It's free for 30 and when it runs out uninstall it, reinstall it or set your date to the future before you install stuff like the good old days so you have 8 billion days demo. If you're interested in running Ubuntu you can download the live CD from Ubuntu.com you don't even have to install the operating system you can run it from CD and do what you need to do on your computer without screwing up your Windows installation Kind of good to do, leave it booted, that way while you're working on your Pi, not Pi Mega, while you're working on your Pi Storm uh, hard drives or whatever, it's a good way to transfer files back and forth or by removing the card and putting it in because you have access to the Linux file system on both sides. It's up to you, it's yours to enjoy. I'm just giving you the real guys tutorial here on how to do RTG. And I just learned it myself and having experience with Picasso 96, it's not too bad. I'm going to crank up the volume on this one and uh, I made it 19 by 1080 but I told it it was 1024 by 768. Yep. So anyway, that's a 32-bit BGRA RTG card for, uh, I keep wanting to say Pi Amiga, Pi Storm, Amiga 500, third edition. You saw what I did, I got four 2 gig hard drives. Got to figure out the large hard drive support. OS 3. Uh, 141 here. We got the old update 3141, which is 45194, 46143. I think it's only on their fast file system 4620 or 4613 that do the large hard drive support. Since that was PFS3, I might blow these away and see if I can get that one bigger drive. Just a thought. I'll mess around with it in the future, but for now. That concludes my little dabble into Pi Storm. I'm gonna do something real special, Clark. Pi Storm Amiga 1000, kickstart. You ain't gotta put a stupid disc in, and you get 120 megs of RAM. So that's where one of the three are going in here, the other one's going in here, and the other one's going someplace else. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you'll learn something.